You know, for a deck called Most Wanted, I gotta say, I'm not actually as excited about this one as I am some of the others, but due to the popularity surrounding some of the cards in this and some of the concepts, figured this would be solid to cover first. So let's take a look at the new cards and a few noteworthy reprints in the Commander deck Most Wanted for Outlaws at Thunder Junction. And so as with every commander deck we see nowadays, it's pretty much 10 new cards and then some reprints. That 10 new cards does typically include the cover card. There's usually two different commanders that you can choose from. Olivia Opulent Outlaw is the first one, the face commander, if you will. Uh, it is a one red, white, black legendary vampire assassin with flying and lifelink. And it says whenever one or more outlaws you control deal combat damage to a player, create a treasure token. Outlaw is a new grouping, if you will. It is assassins, mercenaries, pirates, rogues, warlocks, and bears tigers and lions oh my three mana sacrifice two treasures put two plus and plus encounters on each creature you control activate as a sorcery so it's three mana plus getting rid of the two which means you're paying five mana to put two plus and plus encounters on everything but you're able to make treasures when you deal damage it's not whenever one deals create a treasure for each it's just period so at most you're going to be creating one treasure with this each turn it's inherently kind of weak on the surface i think i mean one treasure token per turn is all right five mana to get you know two plus plus encounters on everything is decent it's also sorcery speed i may be in the minority on this but i'm just not generally all that you know blown away by olivia i think she's decent but i think the other face commander in this deck is substantially better that is vihan gold waker and this is the same colors red white black legendary dwarf warlock this other outlaws you control have Vigilance and Haste. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may have treasures you control become 3-3 three, three Construct Assassin Artifact Creatures in addition to their other types until end of turn. So obviously, to me, this one feels like a much stronger potential commander. For one, black and red have some of the best ways to make treasure tokens, period. White has the ability to duplicate tokens that come into play, so plenty of ways to put a lot of treasure out fast. And then you turn those treasures into creatures that can swing for massive damage. Not to mention, because they are assassins, they will all have haste, so if for some reason a treasure ETBs the same turn, you can do a lot for relatively low investment, and I honestly think this card has a ton of potential um, with various different strategies. Even like being a dwarf, it has really interesting uh, synergy with, I think it's Magda Brazen Outlaw, um, which allows you to sacrifice treasures to pull dragons from the deck, so maybe you can play some kind of combination. Uh, but this card's color schemes make it easy to find a deck that should work pretty damn well with it. I, I think out of the two, he's the better one, even if Olivia did get the, uh, the fancy art treatment. But... Maybe you guys feel differently. Definitely feel free to sound off in the comments and let me know your thoughts on which one is better. But let's look at some of the other cards. Angelic Sellsword is four and a white angel mercenary with flying and vigilance. Whenever it enters the battlefield or a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, create a 1-1 red mercenary creature token. Mercenary creature tokens in this set have tap target creature control with plus one plus zero till end of turn. Um, not the best, but I mean, token generation is solid in general. Uh, whenever Angelic Sellsword attacks, if its power is six or greater, draw a card. Obviously, the intent here is going to be to use the the tokens that you're generating to like buff it up get extra resources the fact that you can keep doing this with non-tokens is actually pretty solid being able to like spam the board with mercenary tokens buff your stuff up or use them for other purpose uh which we'll talk about in a minute with the next card we're going to cover uh it's overall a solid card a little high cost in my opinion in terms of like what it does for you um but it's also not bad i'm a little bit surprised they decided to go with activate only as a sorcery for the mercenary effects but maybe it's just to balance it out and prevent it from becoming too strong i don't really know we ride at dawn is two and a white enchantment legendary creature spells you cast have convoke which of course means you can tap creatures to pay for one of the mana or a mana of that creature's color so obviously right away you can see where making mercenary tokens allow you to bypass some of the costs for certain things you want to bring out not bad obviously only works for legendaries uh it does say whenever your commander attacks create a one one red mercenary creature token pretty solid um you're basically creating you know more things for convoking on future turns or just board presence in general i do like it it's relatively low cost and i think in the right deck it's going to be pretty strong charred grave robber is two in a black skeleton mercenary when it ecbs return target outlaw from your graveyard to your hand it has escape three black black and exile four other cards from your graveyard meaning you can then cast it from the grave for its escape cost and of course when it does escape it does so with a plus one plus one counter on it so it is recursion that does allow you to get your outlaws back. Obviously, uh, a pretty good, you know, 
combination with some of the other things we're looking at here, the commander being able to give your outlaws haste, being able to, you know, bring this back and then recur other resources from your grave. Pretty good. I, I kind of see where they're going in terms of, of how it's being put together. Uh, back in town is X2 Black Sorcery. Return X target outlaw creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. And honestly, so for four mana, you can bring back one outlaw. For five mana, you can bring back two, so on and so forth. It's definitely not terrible. Um, I, I think there's a lot of really good pirate cards. There's definitely some decent rogues as well. I don't think this is necessarily going to be restricted to just like some kind of outlaw tribal. I think in general, this will slot pretty well as a way to bring stuff back. Um, Lord knows, you know, pirates having access to decent recursion is solid, and there has been a lot of new pirate stuff that's come out relatively recently. We had some in Ixalan as well. It's a decent card. Discreet Retreat is three and a black enchantment aura. Enchant a land. Enchanted land has tap, add two mana of any color. Spend this only to cast outlaw spells or activate abilities from outlaw sources. Whenever you cast your first outlaw spell each turn, you draw one card and lose one life. It's all right. I don't think it's amazing. I mean, obviously, mana... You know, bumping the mana up is good. It does cost four to play. Um, the, the draw power is decent. I don't think it's a bad card. It just, it doesn't really strike me as anything that great either. If anything, it reminds me of like a card like Wild Growth, but obviously that only costs one to play. So you get a lot more, you know, out of it versus what you spend. But the fact that it enchants a land, less likely of the land getting popped, then going to grave. I mean, there's some, there's some silver linings for it. I'm just not super sold on it myself. Dead Before Sunrise, three and a red instant. Until end of turn, outlaws you control get plus one plus zero and gain tap. This creature deals damage equal to its power to target creature. This is pretty good. It could definitely be a pretty strong board wipe uh, to get rid of a lot of opponent's stuff. I can see pirates using this very easily. Um, you know, four mana to be able to buff your creatures up and then have them deal damage essentially like half of a fight without having to worry about also dying in the process. This could be a really good board wipe. But being an instant does help a lot. Um, in the sense that it does give you a lot more flexibility in when to use it. And it doesn't cost too much where I would say it's like, you know, not worth playing, if that makes sense. And obviously you're, the, the commander, if you're playing Vihan, does give them all haste. So you can use it the turn they come into play, deal a bunch of damage if you have the mana for it. Obviously, assuming you've got a good bit of treasures, you know, kind of how it goes. Greywater's Fixer is two black red creature lizard mercenary. Each outlaw creature in your graveyard has Encore X, where X is its mana value. Exile it and pay its Encore cost. For each opponent, create a token copy that attacks that opponent this turn. If able, they gain haste. So, again, another really strong card being able to, like, duplicate stuff. Just using something like Charred Grave Robber, you make three copies. You get three outlaws back, and they attack everyone else in your pod. Um, obviously, there's plenty of different ways to utilize this and, and, and kind of make it work. And it doesn't... Again, nice card, and and the fact that you basically get the ability to just pay the mana cost of the creature, make the copies, no harm, no foul in terms of the investment, and I think it could pay off pretty well. Um, it's, it's overall pretty good. Bounty board is the last one. This is three mana artifact tap, add one mana of any color. Pay one, put a bounty counter on target creature, activate only as a sorcery. Whenever a creature with a bounty counter on it dies, each of its controller's opponents draws a card and gains two life. Kind of funny uh, from like a thematic perspective, like if you're trying to politic at the table, put the counter on something and then you and your opponents work together to get it off and then everyone gains some uh, resources from it. Um, I mean, it's in that same vein as like Command Sphere, or Decanter of Endless Water and other cards that cost three. I don't I don't know that like it. I don't know that it's that great, but there is sort of the because uh, I say that because your opponents are benefiting from this as well. So unless you're like down to the last person in the pot or whatever, um, it doesn't seem like all that often it's going to be netting you a ton of resources and not helping the rest of the table, but it definitely will help with politicking. So there is that going for it, um, you know, from, from that perspective. Overall, I think this one's a little bit underwhelming, but there are a few really strong cards and the reprints in the deck are decent. I mean, Queen Marchessa gets a reprint in there, which is pretty decent. Uh, Brina, the Demagogue, another card that was worth like over 10 bucks. Academy Manufacturer, really, really strong card for like treasures and tokens in general. The land base is all right in here. Nothing crazy like that sticks out to me. It's like, oh my God, but I guess Command Beacon is in here, which is a pretty de decent card from uh, Commander Legends. It's not really the most impressive commander deck overall, but it does have a few decent cards. Nothing big, nothing that kind of shocks you. Like, oh, wow, this is going to be game-changing. But I think it's decent enough. Uh, it's definitely not my most wanted, but maybe it is for one of you. Let me know what you guys think of the new cards as well as the value in this deck as a whole. Is it one you'd look to buy, or do you think you're going to probably put your money elsewhere? Let me know in the comments, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.